A strong sense of place is often due to the creativity that surrounds it. The scene, the vibe, grows and sustains when the artist is left unchecked. Environment means everything. Um, I was born in France, but I moved to Tucson in uh, 1994. What brought you here? Music. One of the great things about Fourth Avenue is that it gives local musicians a venue period, to play. And, you know, if you don't have a place to go and run it up the flagpole in front of uh, in front of an audience, then, you know, you're you're stuck rehearsing at, at home all the time. I came here to do a, a film, a documentary on Giant Sand, local band. And I stayed after that. That wasn't the plan. But once you step in here, it's it's hard to escape. And it's good. I was uh, an announcer, uh, ultimately the uh, music director at KWFM, um, started there in 1971 and worked there through 1980. Yeah, spent, spent uh, a fair amount of time uh, as, as a musician on 4th Avenue as well. We were in Palm Springs in a Denny's, and there was a woman there who was a spot-on ringer for Shelley Duvall. And so I stopped, and she was talking to a friend, and she said she just came from Tucson. And the friend said, how do you like Tucson? She said it was filled with old cowboys and ghost cows. Ghost cow. Ghost cow. Yep. 1981, I moved down here. I used to put on a burlap dress that I bought at Value Village on 4th Avenue and played a mall bar, uh, which Al was bartending, and he discovered me and uh, put out my first couple music cassettes. My sound is sort of a twangy rock and roll sound with, uh, you know, echoes of Dwayne Eddy and Freddie King and, and uh, Harlan Howard and Buck Owens in the songwriting department. I like to use uh, four or five chords and uh, point out social problems without offering any solutions. Pretty much I've been playing music with uh, Sidewinders and uh, Sand Rubies and Luminarios since about 1985, and here I am, almost clean and sober. I love Fourth Avenue. I take my family there constantly. We're always at Fourth Avenue, uh, whether music or whether it is there, or just something about the culture of it. It's like the true artistic district of this town. Yes, so we were Joshua Butcher and the Melancholy. Apparently nobody can spell melancholy, but nobody knows what a tangelo is either, so it doesn't. Fourth Avenue is, has always supported uh, original music rock bands and folk bands. Anything new and innovative is kind of happening there. There's always been a great music yeah. scene just because you know, it's been a thing where nobody's really very careerist about it. Nobody's made a living from it or made a fortune from it, but aesthetically, very healthy. There's always something to see, something to do. You know, you always see something interesting. Um, the drummer Blaine, you and I, would just grab buckets and stuff and, and play drums walking down the avenue in the evening, <laughs> With wearing, wearing baskets on our heads and painting our faces all goofy. It was great. <laughs> I didn't see that on your resume. <laughs> Tucson as a whole is a good place to get started. Um, Fourth Avenue and downtown provide, well, never enough, of course, but sufficient spaces where you can practice, start up, try out things. You're really allowed to do a lot of things in this town that you couldn't do in, say, in a, a larger city like Phoenix or Los Angeles or something. Um, if you're a cover band, you can't play Fourth Avenue, and, unless you've got some sort of, sort of shtick. Yeah, we played that plush lounge, and they said no covers at all. So they wanted to make sure everything was original, and that's kind of what they want to shoot for. You may not make any money. You may have to play on Wednesday night, but at least you've got a gig. I mean, they don't ever pay enough, but that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but that's our fight. It's been, what, 30 years since I worked at KWFM, and I'm just, you know, starting to think of, of the of the different bars that were down there that people were playing at and up, you know, oh, my gosh. Uh, it's, yeah. The clubs on 4th Avenue, 6th, Ave, 6th Street, uh, all over, the, you know, the downtown area of Tucson were just 
blown away with great local music. But there was there was kind of a circuit, and groups would would come in um, on on this you know southwest circuit. You know, you could see the Circle Jerks, Black Flag, Fear, the Dream Syndicate, all those bands coming through. It was it was quite a healthy little scene back then, and uh, and a, a pretty wild place really. Fourth Avenue was kind of like this little Berkeley, you know. It was 1978 when I first started working there, um, but. What's salient about that is, is that, you know, it wasn't too far away from, like, the whole thing of the 60s, the everything, peace, love, experiment, have fun, you know? It's basically been the same unless you count those college places, those big mega bars down there, you know? So, so far, you know, we've all stuck around because it's not been changed that much. Nitrine is now Part of it is uh, the surly wench. Uh, they used to do, uh, they probably still do burlesque shows, and I was invited to uh, to sing in between the burlesque girls doing their, their skits, and it was wonderful. It was a different context. It was like being on Fourth Avenue, but being playing to a different crowd, playing a different genre, playing, you know, stretching. You've been in the music business for eight years? Mm hmm. It's a long time. It is. <laughs> it is. It is a long time. I, I'm not, I don't necessarily even know if I'm necessarily in the music business, but I've been playing music for a long time. Um, I'm also an actor. Is yeah, that, we, play, yeah, yeah we, played, we, we played at Plush, Plush last we August. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Before we went, I hadn't played in Tucson in a very long time. Because I, I generally actually go either on the East Coast or Midwest or, the, or Europe. We just got back from touring Denmark. We were there for 12 days, 8 shows. And a lot yeah. of the venues were actually old government facilities, like a train station yeah. or uh, Tr uh, an art center where they, you know, create content for, you know, and have a school. And so the government actually funds, funds the uh, facilities, and that's where they pay the artists from, is from the government funding. So yeah. that's an interesting point, considering the topic of this documentary. You were yeah. going to totally bypass that and just talk about beer. Yeah, you know... I know when I go to Europe, artists get subsidies, uh, venues get subsidies, booking agents get subsidies, labels even get subsidies. So once you've got that in place, it's of course it's going to trickle down to the artist and to the shows and to the audience. And so that's that's not the quite happening here at all. This kind of thing is just it's too expensive. The bands, bringing them in, the contracting, the hours, they got to practice. I think you're in a very difficult business. You know, there's the, the gigs that pay you better, but maybe they're a little bit more work to play versus the ones that don't pay a lot, but the audiences are really gracious, um, which makes it more fun for the artist. For me, the corporate gigs are sort of a, of a necessary evil. There's not so much a, a premium put on original music in those places. Yeah, they don't, they don't really care about the music. They're just there to drink as much as they can. Back in our day, we drank as much as we could and we cared about the music. <laughs> as far as corporate versus, you know, non-corporate, there's a million ways to skin a cat. Look, I'm going to do this. Nobody's going to tell me how to do it. This is going to be my, this is going to be my vision. And, you know, come hell or high water, I'm going to make this work. And really, at the end of the day, it boils down to how much work you're willing to, to put into uh, achieving your goals and your dreams. No matter what, it's going to take a lot of work, whichever path that you choose. I just want to keep playing. <laughs> However, that's going to happen.